here. Um, we've just seen them in the last talk. Matrix models uh, can actually be a very nice tool for understanding non theory. theory. And I will now tell you in a bit more detail um, how to find the regularization of gauge theory for non theory <coughs> uh, by using these matrix model techniques. Um, the talk is based on John Burke, and Frank Frank Meyer, and Carol Scheinert, and is here as well. And um, well, it covers part of the paper we read. So, um, the outline, I will shortly say something about non commutativity um, and then I'll show you how to do gate theory on non commutative R4. I mean, just the usual way to do it, it's well known. Um, but of course, I mean, it has problems like the infinities, like the uh, infrared mixing. So we really need a regularization for this. And we will do this by using a matrix model, uh, actually with two fuzzy spheres. Um, then I'll have a quick look at the instantons. I mean, we could match part of the instanton sector uh, of the regularized theory with the unregularized theory. And then I'll come to conclusions. <coughs> so non-commutativity. Um, the, the infinities in quantum field theory really suggest that there are some new structures beyond, and especially at very small distances, we, we expect uh, new structures. And um, well, we want to take uh, non commutativity as, as a model of, of such a quantized space time. Um, the, the coordinates um, are now operators, uh, they do not commute anymore. Um, but at least for, for the so called canonical case, where the, this non commutative activity is theta uh, is constant. The singularities um, of the field theory, uh, they are not cured. Uh, we even get these new things. Um, also, we need a regularization uh, of this theory. <coughs> first, let me tell you uh, what this non commutative R4 is. Um, well, we are in Euclidean, so you basically can just rotate your space. Um, that the non-commutativity has a nice form. We will take this uh, theta or into two pairs, theta one and theta two. And and in this talk, I will for simplicity, uh, simplicity also do this. And then I want to complexify the, the coordinates, which is more well, just really uh, usual. Um, and the same for, for the right hand side. So, um, um, so in, in the end, I I end up with two such pairs of hyperbolic algebra. Um, well, this is one hyperbolic algebra, another hyperbolic algebra, and they commute each other. And for this, of course, I do have a representation. Uh, I just use the usual representation on box space as PA2 and new. And in this picture, um, the derivatives are the inner, they're created by the commutator of the coordinates. Um, this is where typical features of non commutative uh, field theory are just in general. Um, so, how to do gauge theory on such a. <coughs> well, I introduce um, a matrix action with these big XIs, they're infinite dimensional matrices. The trace is uh, is over the Fox space that uh, I just uh, showed you. And, and this here is just made to reproduce as a ground state um, non commutative R4. So uh, the ground state will be <coughs> the non commutative R4. And then I'll get fluctuations at AI, ground with ground state. Um, and they will be of so called covariant coordinates. Um, I want them to transform like this under unitary transformation in the adjoint representation. And as of course the coordinates do not transform, this means that fluctuations have to transform like this. And if you remember that the commutator of the coordinates um, is a derivative, you see that it really does transform uh, like um, like gauge field should, should transform. And if you look at this field strength here and just write it um, 
uh, in AIs and XIs, you see, I mean, these are derivatives again. So this really looks like uh, uh, like strength should look like. And uh, the whole formulation is actually equivalent to one star product, which is maybe better known. But this is just a uh, different representation. It's the same, same story. Um, well, um, there are of course problems with this uh, gauge theory. I mean, first of all, the, the rank of the gauge group is not fixed. I have set to, uh, for every UN gauge group in this theory. Um, also, the infinities of the commutative theory persist, um, the planar diagrams, and I also get the non planar diagrams, the, uh, the UR mixing we heard in the last talk. So, we really need a regularization for this. Um, and what we will use uh, <coughs> will be uh, a finite dimensional representation of space, I mean, a compact space, but it should go in some limit to our four feet. And as a, as a building block, we will use the fuzzy sphere. I mean, John Miller was the first, he invented it. Um, and uh, the fuzzy sphere, I mean, of course, it's two dimensional, it's created by uh, these creative commutation uh, relations like this. Um, and you will easily recognize that it's nothing else but SD2. Um, so these uh, lambdas uh, are seen as the n dimension uh, irreducible representations of, of SU2. So they're uh, well, finite dimensional matrices, that's the main point. Um, uh, functions in, in these uh, matrices can, can be seen as analogs of spherical harmonics. Um, up to an angular momentum and minus one, so there's a cutoff uh, of the angular momentum. Um, um, well, the lambs are, are just matrices, so to get to coordinates, we introduce the radius r, and then they scale like this. And the, the tangential derivatives of in these fuzzy spheres are again dissipated uh, by the commutator of the lambdas. Well, of course, this is only two dimensional, so to go to four dimensions, uh, we will just take two copies of uh, the Pali sphere. Uh, and uh, now the matrices which get generated, so we have left matrices and right matrices there, and square dimensional matrices. Um, and well, the coordinates scale again, uh, the radius uh, divided by m, and also the tangential derivatives to look exactly the same. But um, so, how do we do gauge theory um, uh, on this uh, space? I mean, uh, it's basically the same recipe. Um, we, we introduce a matrix action. Um, we have six um, and square dimensional matrices, and um, well, we just build uh, um, an action uh, so that the ground state is again uh, these lambdas uh, we want to have. I mean, you can see these are just relations. Um, and we can again uh, introduce uh, covariant coordinates, so these yards will be covariant coordinates, uh, like this, we have fluctuations, and they again really build the gauge theory on this. You can also see this uh, in the limit to two spheres, which of course also exists, and this really is the uh, gauge theory on, uh, on this. And we also have here to use potential. Um, well, it looks like this, it, uh, it's really there. To, to stabilize the size of the representation we want, or um, in terms of the coordinates, to stabilize the radius of the spheres we're using. Um, well, um, this uh, model is really finite. I mean, uh, and well defined. Uh, the gauge group sits uh, to U1, um, but of course, we also can have gauge groups uh, UN. Um, we just implement them by changing the size of the matrices we're using uh, well, from m squared to n times m squared. And um, well, as we have seen before, the quantization can, um, at least in principle, be performed by a path integral of the matrix entries uh, like this. And um, well, it is well defined, it's finite for every m. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, everything is well defined. Uh, which can be very hard, but uh, everything is finite. So I want to show you now um, how to go from these two fuzzy spheres to R4 theta, uh, how this can in some scaling uh, limit uh, go there. Um, 
for this, we go to the North Pole. I mean, we just said like uh, three and a half. Uh, and, and then do a double scaling limit. We just blow up the North Pole. Um, and we keep, uh, keep this ratio fixed uh, to theta. And if you do this, I mean, just for one particular, for example, see, I mean, this here will be small because we are uh, at the North Pole. Uh, if you then take this into account, I mean, you really have this computational relation to black on um, non polar not plane. Um, this is really what we want. Um, and for four dimension, I mean, it's, it's easy. We just uh, do the same scaling limit uh, now for for for, uh, for generators. And um, but these uh, x uh, one four, we really end up with our four feature. Um, so this is in a way. Um, regularization of the space, but we now also want the regularization of the gauge theory. And um, we will do this uh, in doing the scaling limit, not on the coordinates, but on the covariant coordinates. And uh, these covariant coordinates did build our gauge theory. So we, these uh, did, uh, covariant coordinates VI did build the gauge theory on the spheres, and we scaled them um, to um, the covariant coordinates on R4 theta. And this way, uh, you can see that really um, the gauge action on the fuzzy sphere uh, goes over to the gauge action on, on R4 theta. Uh, so well, we really have this desired regularization for the gauge theory on R4 theta. Um, and as an aspect of this, um, uh, now I want to have a look at the instanton. Um, well, there's one class of instantons on, on R4 theta, uh, which can be rather easily constructed. Um, well, this xi is an infinite dimensional metric, so um, um, we, we can just insert here a finite dimensional diagonal matrix. Um, these uh, instantons are, are rather well known. They're normally uh, written slightly different projectors, but it's really the same thing. Um, and it's also easy to see that these really fulfill the equation of motion um, uh, on R4 theta for, for gauge theory. So uh, these are the instantons, um, uh, and the dimension of, uh, of this diagonal matrix uh, corresponds to the charge of these instantons. Um, on fuzzy spheres, we, we can mimic this construction. Um, we just here uh, these are. Uh, um, the generators of the other spheres, and we just uh, shrink them in size to get some space to, to insert here also the diagonal matrices. Um, and uh, in fact, um, these guys do fulfill the equations of motion of body spheres. They are a bit more complicated, so I didn't write them down. But for scaling, they, they really are uh, instantons on fuzzy spheres, and it's quite obvious that uh, in the limit uh, they go to. To the instantons um, we had on our four theta. Um, but there's one additional thing. Um, well, before we, could, we really could have any ch uh, charge k uh, for the instantons, so well, any size of this diagonal matrix we uh, inserted. But now on, on the fuzzy sphere, um, uh, the size of the matrix is fixed to, to m squared. We, we can't change this. Um, so to get finite instantons, we have to uh, make these two representations on the left and on the right smaller. And for finite instantons, the only choice really is this. I mean, we get n minus l and n plus l for the representation. But this means that the charge of the instantons has to be l squared. Um, so in this regularized theory, um, we get something like a super selection rule uh, for, for the instanton charge. Um, for the charge of the instantons. Um, well, of course, um, you can kind of uh, play the model or use different models of different sizes to get back all the instantons, but at least um, they will be in different sectors of the theory. So the regularization really uh, uh, does it. I think you will the selection. Yeah, I'm talking about two actually. Does it, does it, I, I, maybe a little bit confused. Does it mean that you miss something using this regularization? 
related to everything. Okay, so, so it sort of breaks some kind of symmetry by. Um, yeah, I mean it changes the, the topology. Um, uh, I mean it's not really clear uh, how to integrate this um, <coughs> because well the unregularized theory is not really very well defined. So it would be it would be interesting to see um, how other kinds of regularizations. I mean you could use Tori for example uh, affect uh, these instanton sectors, and if you also get sort of selection rules, how if it's an artifact of, of regularization. Or not. Um, um, yeah, so let's come to the conclusions. Um, well, we've seen the gauge theory on how procedural must be regularized because there are affinities and the sex of every branch of the gate group. Uh, so um, we, we want something that is well defined. And the gauge theory I showed you is the gauge theory on, on the frequency that provides a sort of regularization. Um, we were also able to match parts of the instanton sectors. Of course, these instantons I showed you on all the instantons on the um, um, But it's a class of instantons, and uh, I mean, they kind of match. But this kind of regulation uh, does introduce a super selection rule. Somehow related to the work of Reka with Schomerus, classifying deep brains and Katsmudi so algebras, which geometrically correspond to, to the fuzzy sphere. Uh -huh. I think that Lens and Tons is a zero brain, a tensor product of a single written model or something like this. Well, I know, I guess, how it will. Well, it's something that's related for the case of the fuzzy sphere. I mean, as two times as two is not a good background, as you say. As two, the kind of, as two, I mean, the constant theta is not, it's not a good background. So. So I would say that in the constant H field, right? Yeah. Well, that also. I mean, the case of S2 is absolutely very closely related to Alexei Yeah. Okay. It's not the same, but it's very closely related. Yeah. Now, we're wondering whether we, also in this case, <coughs> we find the super selection rule, or find that there's something that's missing on the sphere <coughs> compared to, to R4. I was just wondering. So. Okay. Well, I just wanted to add, so what about Fermi? Well, um, uh, well, yeah, the well, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, of course, um, well, we, we were able to introduce fermions. Um, um, we didn't really look for fermions in this uh, limit, but on uh, on the gauge theory on these two S uh, S two cross S two, um, we did more stuff. I mean, um, there's a hidden S O six symmetry which helps to to introduce fermions. And uh, which also helps to kind of uh, put it in a nicer form to study it as a matrix model. I mean, this is still a six matrix model, and if you want to do calculations, you need less. Um, so um, we also did some reformulation on this, and also. Uh, uh, so you can put 
put the 